So therefore it's time to move on to our moment and let's think about the moment and maybe you can go ahead and draw the moment diagram for yourself. Maybe you want to try that. Of course you already know that you would put the identifier here and then the Newton meter as the unit right there. And now maybe find the values and graph them for you. You can click the pause button. I'm just going to continue. The first value that we found was what? 45.72 if I'm not mistaken. So we found here plus 45.72. We also found here plus 45.72. And then on the other side we found 47.15. So plus 47.15 and then plus 47.15. Of course, if I had a piece of paper in front of me here, this would be clearly separated from the shear force diagram. But just so you can see the structure itself, I'm going to have to do it like this. And now I can start drawing this. And please note that these are all positive. Right? And that they are equal and equal here. So I'm going to graph those now. I'm going to go ahead and pretend that this year would be 45.72. And then the next one is a little bit higher. And now I have to think about how do I continue to draw this graph. And now it's very important that you go back to your equations in lecture 13 and look at the equation that you used to develop this first value. What was in your equation? Your equation included this cut and you had 11.43 multiplied by 4 meters. So what would that really mean if you were to cut the system at 3 meters, 2 meters, 1 meter? So take a look at that equation. 11.43 times 4 was the value that you got here. If I cut at let's say 1 meter, my equation would say 11.43 times 1. At 2 meters, it would say 11.43 times 2. At 3 meters, it would say 11.43 times 3. And so on and so forth. And so what that means is I am not having an easy time anymore with a constant function. I now actually have a sloped function or a linear function because the lever arm, which we used for to get this value, is actually linearly increasing from left to right. So the further I move away from the support, the larger the lever arm becomes in a linear fashion. What that also means is that at A, the lever arm is zero. And so I actually already know the next value. I know that this must be zero. And of course, you could have told that before because we have here the hinge indicated, right? So this point here acts like a hinge. Sometimes teachers are not as nice as I am to give you actually the circle here. And they just, um, you know, assume that you know that the moment there's zero. But the reason I'm giving you the circle is to remind you that the moment there must be always equal to zero. And therefore, I also know that it must be zero here on the right side under B. And once again, we have only concentrated forces acting on the system, including the support reactions. And therefore, it's always force times lever arm. And the lever arm is always linearly increasing. This will be different in the future. But for now, for concentrated forces, we can, of course, draw functions that are linearly increasing. So I can connect these points. I can connect these points. And I can also connect these points. And I really invite you to really understand this through, for example, finding the value here in the middle. So go ahead and set up that equation by cutting the system either this way or this way and find the value here. And of course, you could mathematically already tell what that value is from this graph. But I want you to really be able to understand how these values are mathematically and physically derived. So physically is what we did in the last class. Mathematically is what we're doing here right now or what I'm trying to take you to. So let's complete our graph here. This is all positive and I need to indicate my area. And I need to indicate that this here is plus 47.15.
and this here is plus 45.72. The reason I'm doing this here is not to repeat myself, but because this is a significant value and this is a, a significant value in the context of the moment diagram. Why is it significant? Because the slope changes at that point and at this point as well. And of course here zero, we know that it's zero. So this would be full points on an exam.